Hi there to everyone who's joining. We'll be starting up in just over a minute. We're just going to give a, a chance for more people to, to join. Um, it's coming up towards the end of the school day in the UK and a, a few teachers might be seeing their, their little darlings out before, uh, before they join the webinar. Um, I'm Graham and I'll be hosting the session and we've got Sue who will be running the, the vast majority of the presentation. So um, the time's one minute past three according to my, my MacBook and we'll be looking to start at two minutes past. Thank you. At this point, this is where I thought I, I would have liked uh, a, a little bit of elevator music that we could put on <laughs> in the background. And I'm not a very good singer, so I don't want to empty the room. Please don't, it's fine. <laughs> <Hope>. <laughs> Yeah, so numbers appear to have settled down, so we'll look to get started. Um, first thing I would like to do is to welcome everybody to the Learn and Redefined. This is Shobi's first ever online conference, and we are looking to celebrate teaching and learning and all things EdTech. I'm Graeme Trick, a learning specialist here at Shobi. And for those of you who not um, met Shobi before, we're a hybrid learning platform that's empowering over 3 million users globally. And our aim is to provide richer, deeper, more personalized feedback and assessment to all learners. And it's something we're really proud of because we've been going for almost 10 years. If you want to find out more, you can visit us at showby.com. During the presentation, please, please, please use the Q&A feature. Um, Sue has just let us know that she, she loves interruptions. So if there are questions on particular slides, please post a question as that question comes to mind. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll look to interrupt Sue so she can, uh, she can answer it and make this useful for yourselves. Um, and, and for now, what I'd like to do is just to hand over, welcome Sue and thank you for in advance for doing the session. And this is all about exploring coding for students with Codable. So over to you, Sue. Thank you very much. Um, hello and good afternoon, everybody, wherever you are. Um, it is absolutely pouring with rain here, so we might hear some thunder and lightning, but just bear with me. Um, my name is Sue Wakefield. I've been a teacher at ACS Hillington International School since the 1980s. Um, and um, since 2000, I've been working with technology within the school. Um, we've actually been an Apple school since 1982. And um, that has given us a, a sort of a, a very interesting way of doing it. Codable, I, I'll give you um, some history of Codable once we get going, but um, we started to use Codable, it's pouring out there. We started to use Codable back in uh, about 2013, but um, it's our foundation uh, for coding. It's, it's where we're, uh, we start with our little ones. We're a four through 18 school. I work with the under 10s as both a curriculum leader and a technology coach. As um, Richard, um, as uh, Graham said, please, please, please post any uh, questions that you have and I'll try and answer them as we go. If you can't see anything, you can't know anything, please again, put those questions in. I've also inside the chat put a lot of the resources from this presentation so that you'll be able to use them. So let's get started. First of all, a history lesson. Okay, so there we go. Back in the 1980s, when I first started observing technology, because I didn't use technology in, in my university when I trained to be a teacher, um, everywhere I looked, there was a Terrapin logo. And Terrapin logo was basically a little Terrapin that moved around a screen and people made it go forwards and turn angles. And it was, it was coding at its, at its base level. It was developed by Emma, MIT. Once the 1990s came along, multimedia tools like Works and Appleworks started internet resources started to grow and very much within schools, it started to do original content um, and some floppy disks started to arrive. The 2000s saw the invention of one of my absolute favorite apps um, or CD-ROM it was called KidPix. And KidPix really allowed the students to, of younger students, the under 10s, to create multimedia presentations. And it was a really fascinating time in te inside technology. Crystal Rainforest um, did have coding. If anyone knows Crystal Rainforest, it was a Sherston um, first of all CD-ROM. And at the end of it, you had to create a, a crystal using coding. So that was really the only time that we used coding back in those days. By the time the 2010s came, that's when mobile technology really came in. And we're celebrating 10 years of being a one-to-one -one, um, Apple iPad school this year and the apps exploded. 
um, mobile technology made a real difference to the lower schools and elementary schools across the world. And coding started to make a comeback with 2013 being the very first hour of code. Steve Jobs did this uh, lovely quote, everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. And I'm gonna come back to that a little bit later. So why code? This is a quote from one of my favorite organizations called the International Society for Technology and Education. I've highlighted four particular words in there, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. And those four words are the philosophy that myself and many of the teachers I work with um, hold dear to. And these four words were first uh, coined, if you like, back in uh, 2014 by Tony Wagner. Tony Wagner at the time was um, innovation director at Harvard. And I happened to attend a conference that he was speaking at. And to say he changed the way I taught was, would be an understatement. And these, if I've got a link that I've put into the uh, chat, which is a link to a 2014 um, YouTube clip um, that if you want to find out a bit more, it's worth watching and it's as relevant today as it was back in 2014 when I first um, heard about it. So enough about the history. What about today? Well, how does coding look in my schools today? And how do these four C's, as we call them, um, impact on uh, coding and how it's taught. So I have two short videos. The first one is about communication and collaboration. And it begins, I hope you can hear this, with one of my five-year-olds explaining what to do to her friend. So these are my four and five year olds um, doing a, a coding lesson. Um, they often work together. The classrooms are never quiet. There's a lot of communication and collaboration going on. But what I find amazing by the first clip and this one that you're watching now is that these five-year-olds are not touching each other's iPads. They're not doing it for that child. Um, I couldn't record the voice on this one because the classroom was a little bit noisy, but Claire on the left is actually um, talking the other child through using the vocabulary, using the words to help her understand. And this is um, actually conditions, which is a higher level uh, than the basic. Um, introduction to it. Here we get some older children. Um, these are my third graders. Um, so that's year fours. And laptops aren't used very often in our school anymore. But we still have children, we have a third of turnover of children every year. And so we need to make sure that they can use a trackpad, as well as for standardized testing. So Codable is a great app that allows us to get that going. And these children are helping each other. Um, the little boy who's being helped there, he's actually on a higher level than the other two, but they jump in immediately to try and help them. Normally, in, the, in normal life, we would have older students introducing Codable to younger students. Unfortunately, in this past year, we haven't been able to do that, but hopefully we will be able to uh, get to that point again soon. And here you have some students, again, little girl in the middle actually doesn't speak any English, so um, Candy on the left is using a lot of um, pictures, a lot of pointing, a lot of discussion, trying to get her. And what happened after this, I, I didn't, wasn't able to capture it, was that um, on the next level, she left her to do it herself, but then she asked her to check it before she went forward with it, which I thought was a great way. So again, that celebrating that language, celebrating the correct vocabulary, explaining their thinking, these are all important um, skills that come out during coding lessons. Oh, sorry. Can I do that one again? Let's try. Um, I enjoy doing coding because it's like there's lots of different things you can do and lots of different things that are fun and difficult and all the challenges. I feel like it's good for my brain because it's something new. In my old school, we didn't have coding, and it's something new, so it can like teach me different things and new things that I haven't learned yet. 
So children. Um, I like using Codable because it's really easy to use, and it's like Codable um, coding for beginners, and it's like it's really clear on like loops, and they explain it to you, and they give you really easy things at first, and then it develops into difficult things. We're all teachers, um, and we all know that children love analyzing and breaking down problems into smaller parts. And that's what this program allows us to do. And um, it also develops perseverance and problem solving strategies. Uh, Ian has just recorded a screen recording of this level so that he can add it to what he's proud of this week or when he does his goal setting. I like making fuzzy balls because there's so many like glasses and hats and you can make the name whatever you want and it's really fun. The little ones actually call the program fuzzy balls um, and when they come into the room they like to use it. Here is a second grader who's using his uh, screen um, shot, uh, he's screenshotting the fuzzy ball he's just created and he's adding it to his keynote presentation where he's already put a screen recording of his uh, level that he's just achieved. And again, this is another way of recording his learning. Um, we have student led conferences at the end of the year, so this could be used as an evidence for that. It can also be shared with me as the teacher or actually show, allow him to monitor his own um, growth over time. So the, the creativity um, benefits of, of using this and the workflow that they start to explore uh, on the iPads is an added bonus on top of actually doing the coding lessons. I'm going to make mazes because you can make it as complicated as you want and it can be all like curvy and stuff like that. My kids love mazes and um, we do celebrate a maze day every year. This is a student who's creating a maze that she's then going to uh, share with the rest of her class so they can solve it. What I find incredible though is being able to take that 2D maze off of the iPad and make it into a 3D puzzle. So these three uh, fourth grade students who are able to understand loops and conditions, which is what's going on here, they designed and, and built a maze together. Apologies for all the turning around, that's my filming. Um, and now they're trying to solve it. Um, I will tell you now it's not solvable, uh, but that's for them to decide and not for me to tell them. I can also observe, do they understand what a condition is? Do they understand where to put conditions? That's just been moved back again. And um, if you look at the right at the top of the screen, you'll see two sheets. Um, and those are the coding strips. So that is the directions, the communication between the student and in, in this case, um, my plastic duck collection, which uh, I have about 50 to 60 of them now, and they come out, they're easy to clean after a lesson and they get used for all sorts of lessons in my school. Um, but these three boys have decided they've got a very long solution to their maze that they're trying to work through. Ultimately, what I will do is go and take one of those strips away and see if they condense, can condense their learning into um, using those loops that they, they've got there. This year, our maze day was at home. And so during distance learning, I asked my students to create some mazes and share them and then try and solve them, ask their families to solve them, um, give me feedback. That's a codable maze that one of the students used. And you can see there's a comment written on it. I love that one, just cut out paper. Some of them were solved. This little one solved hers. Uh, pens were really featured very heavily this year. I don't know why. I loved this one, another cold ball maze. And you can see that she actually solved it. And I loved this because he actually put his planning out as well as what he drew. What I noticed um, is that a number of my students used a program called Minecraft, which I'm sure you're all aware of, and shared mazes that they'd created in that. I have never had exposure to Minecraft. I've watched my godchildren do it. Um, but I, this maze actually went on for four and a half minutes. I have cut it down for you. But I loved this example because he showed his creativity by adding rain. Um, I loved that opening of the door at the beginning. He went all the way through the maze. He took me through the maze. We went up into a tower. We came down again. But the thing I really loved about this one more than the others that came in was that he actually went above it and showed me the complete maze. And he even added sheep, which, you know, sorry, on during lockdown gave me a laugh. And that's always a great thing to be able to, to have and to see.
and that's him finishing his screen recording. That was on his personal device and then he airdropped it to his school device that he had at home and then um, shared it with me. It's so strange to, not talking to a group of people where I can see you either nodding or smiling at me or uh, asking questions. So I'm gonna keep going on to what is Codable and why is it that I like it? So Codable is a computer science pro, um, curriculum and it has three main levels. It starts with Smeeborg and then Asteroidia and then Bug World. And you can see that the they have ages given to them. So it's like a scope and sequence. I will say that I have some fourth graders who have not had exposure before to the basics of coding. And therefore for them, sequencing, conditioning, loops, functions are really important and they need to do that. And then I also have some younger students who because of Minecraft and other uh, programs that they've used really need to accelerate through this. Um, we move from here and use uh, a couple of other coding apps. We use code.org and we also use Swift Playgrounds. And so that is where my students are going. So that's, if you like, the full scope and sequence from lower school into the middle school and then onto the high school. But here today, I'm just going to be talking about Codable. What Codable does is it gives those teachers who may be a little bit um, apprehensive about teaching coding as I am always because I have students who really have more knowledge than I do but if you look at it as a puzzle which I love then I think you, you that's really where it is there are some concept videos you can assign these to students actually within the codable program or you can use them as the focus lesson so um, with the four-year-olds when they come in I might show them the sequencing video I may lay it out on the floor I may have a floor one set up and actually ask them to walk through it um, just to, before we even get on to using the, um, the app on the iPad. They also have um, activity uh, videos. Now these activity videos celebrate links with other curricular areas. So potentially if a teacher is doing um, retail, the students may say, oh, that's just like sequencing. Um, if they're looking at arrays in math, someone will bring that up and say, oh, it's just like encoding. If they're creating um, a dance routine or they're creating a gymnastics routine, they often point to the fact that it's a bit like loops. This particular example that I put up here is creative storytelling with conditions. Now, the if then statements um, is something we do with, with first, second graders in, in regular class, let alone um, when we're doing coding. And Coda will actually give you these three examples. Um, if a fuzzy ball meets a dolphin, then what happens next and they can tell their partners they can write they can draw what would be the end of the story i have used other pictures to link with the curriculum areas that they might be working with so for example even with my older students who maybe are studying greece um, the ancient greek world i maybe choose some pictures from troy or on the parthenon or um, of even the minotaurs maze and ask them if this happens then what would happen next and you can go on and you can have a look at some of those as well. A, an easy way to go on and have a look, and I've put this link into the uh, chat um, as one of the links for you, is the Hour of Code. If you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend the Hour of Code website. Codable and other companies put up free access videos um, and activities that your children can try. So, and they are available all year round. So you can find different things to try in there. And then we celebrate Computer Science Month in December. Um, that's a great coming together for our lower school where we, we that's when we normally do our maze days as well. Um, but it, Computer Science Week in the UK anyway this year is between December the 7th and the 14th. And um, websites like code.org or the Hour of Code will have more uh, programs and more uh, activities added to them every year. So definitely, definitely work, uh, worth working out. And also you can create a free teacher account with Codable and try it out with one or two of your classes. Another link that we do is with the pioneers of computer science and um, Coda will have a women in tech video, which you can use as a, as a again, a focus lesson or a resource. Um, we are a very big 
literacy school and these are some of my absolutely favorite books and if you get hold um if you email me i'm very happy to share some of my favorites Amelia Earhart probably isn't your natural computer science hero, but she's one of my heroines, so I always include her um, when I think about these people. I have now two examples, they're quite short ones, of videos um, that were made by my fourth grade students um, this year in, in, the, in Computer Science Month to celebrate two particular figures, Ada Lovelace and Alan Turing. So the, here's the first one. I hope you enjoy them. Hope you notice that the illustrator actually included a maze on um, Ada's inside Ada's brain, which um, every year the students pick up on and really enjoy. So the second video is I've sped it up a little bit, um, so I'm sorry you won't be able to read all of the words, but I think you'll get the flavour. That video was created in um, as a, a trailer in iMovie. The next one was created purely with iMovie. Apologies, I got that wrong. That's the trailer. The first one was a straight iMovie presentation. Um, we share those via QR codes um, outside the classroom so that other students can come and um, read them. I hope you enjoyed those. Um, those are two of my favorites this year. So what as a teacher do you see and how and why is Codable useful? So this is the teacher dashboard, um, which is very helpful. Um, this is where you create new students, um, you can assign lessons, um, you can create reports, you can look at the videos. Um, it's so much information in here. This is actually a second grade uh, snapshot from earlier this year. And um, the green signifies that this student has successfully completed all the levels and gained all of the um, appropriate um, stars. They have to collect stars on each level. Um, What's, why this is useful for me is because I don't have to monitor them all the time, but I can look back and I can see that these two students with the orange 
haven't quite mastered the conditions. And whilst the other students are working independently, I can bring those two out. I can look and we can go through normally off, off iPad um, with a maze or on paper, um, just moving around as one of my small ducks so that they can really talk to me, communicate with me, share with me about what it is they're not getting. And also they can explain their thinking behind um, how they can solve the puzzle. Um, so you can see also that uh, this little student decided that she'd had enough of loops and she wanted to jump way ahead to variables. Um, and so again, I can have a little chat and we can bring her back and we can make sure that she's, she's moving along at a, at a good pace. I added Luke, who is further down the so in alphabetical order, um, because again, this is a second grader, year three student, who basically um, achieved every level across the whole of Codable in probably two lessons. Um, he just gets it. He understands coding. And so um, for him, it's still useful when I'm doing a focus lesson on loops or a focus lesson on functions for him to come in and be part of that. Often I will have him become the teacher and he will take a small group of children, maybe these two who are on the variables and these uh, two students plus loop will work on a variable program, uh, a puzzle that I've created for them just to make sure that they can collaborate, communicate and think critically about what I've, I've set and I've challenged them. When we were doing loops, um, when I did the focus lesson for loops, and Luke had obviously completed that quite easily, uh, what I did was they were doing, um, they were looking at shapes in the classroom. So I asked him to, um, oh, sorry, this is not going to, I actually, oh, sorry, I knew something was going to go wrong today. This should be playing a video, and I'm really sorry that it's not uh, for some reason. I think I'm going to press one more time and see if I can get it to play. No. Oh, I did. Oh, fantastic. OK, so this is Luke on the left hand side of the screen. Um, so we went back to Terrapin logo. We went back to the beginning. We did a full circle in my history of technology and we looked at a square and we looked at um, how we would draw a square, how he could tell me to draw a square if I was a computer. And then he recognized without me saying anything that actually it could be a loop because if he did the same action four times, then we would create a square. Before we got any further, he was able to identify that if that was a square, then an octagon would be 45, a 45 degree angle. Um, when I asked him how he said, why he said that, he, he said, well, if there are four times 90 in 360 and a circle will be 360 degrees, then I divided 360 by eight and got 45. No, no uh, calculator in sight. So then I asked him to go away and to try some other shapes and see if he could work out how to create those using loops. So the whole class was working on loops, but he was actually focused on a slightly different one. The um, example on the uh, right, I'm gonna see if I can play this again, is a keynote presentation. And in this presentation, where this was fourth graders, we did the same project, um, but they were able to work on different shapes and see which shapes worked and which shapes didn't. And not everybody, most of the students only did three, maybe four shapes, but this particular student went all the way through and was able to find a shape called an isosagon. Yeah, isosagon, um, which just, yeah, amazed me. And they worked out that that's how many sides it would have, and therefore that was the angle. So quite amazing, um, very impressed. But that's again how, uh, coding can be an extension for the math lessons that are going on, but it can also be part of other things. Um, that was my first graders who found out what I was doing because I've been filming some of their classes and they wanted to be part of this presentation. So thank you for allowing my first graders uh, to be there. Um, that is really all I wanted to tell you about, which is about half an hour, I'm a bit short from what they asked me to speak on. Um, these are the resources that I'm sharing with you if you are interested. 
um, please feel free to email me. Um, that's my web address, uh, my email address. Um, Codable, this is their main website if you want to find out more information. If you want to uh, either try it out or talk to someone at Codable, this is their support email. Um, they're a very small company. Um, as I said, I've, we've been using them now for about seven years. This is the link to the Hour of Code that I mentioned. Um, that's the Codable Hour of Code. And then this is the Hour of Code website for the UK. There will be websites in other countries. Code.org, always worth checking out, has some great uh, videos of um, recent, more recent pioneers of, of um, computer science who have actually um, made some videos that are excellent to share with your students. This is the link to the Everyone Can Code. If you're not aware of that, this is the Swift um, Playgrounds uh, main website, and you can get more information in there, including information about how to introduce Swift Playgrounds to your students. And then these last two links down here were resources that I mentioned again in the presentation. This is a little bit video, it's about 20 minutes long, but I would highly recommend work watching it because it's still relevant for today's educationalists. And then this one is uh, the International Society for Technology and Education, who have a lot of resources worth, worth checking out. And this was my final slide. So um, I hope you managed to understand all that information. It's a lot of information to share on a Monday evening at three o'clock. Um, I'm going to have a quick look. Did, did, was there anything? I see that there's two things in the chat, but I don't know if one of those is mine. Nobody did any question and answers. Um, nope, that was just us talking in there. So is there anything else that anyone would like to unmute themselves and ask, or is it just, you're happy to have all my knowledge just coming across the screen at you? I'm very understanding if that's the case. And while people are putting their thinking hats on, I would just like to thank you again, Sue. That has been absolutely amazing. And um, it's really opened my eyes to the possibilities with, with Codable and what you're doing with the computing curriculum. Uh, with with the young young children that you work with so thank um thank thanks again um at the moment it doesn't look as if any questions have come through um probably just because of the the sheer depth of the information that that, that you've shared with everyone so no oh, thank you very much um just for for those people who have joined us codable is part of our school kit range of um apps and we've partnered up with with um key people who we think can really enhance the the um, curriculum with technology and um, you know you can see fabulous way that ways that Sue has been using that with with her children um, doesn't look like any questions have come through so once again thank you for for giving your time today and really sharing your resources your insights into into code and, and the computing curriculum it's it's been fascinating and fantastic listening into you um, and I would like to thank everyone else for joining us as well. So um, you. if you go back to the Learn and Redefined website, there are lots of other workshops. There's a panel taking place at five o'clock. And also each evening we've got networking events on. So um, feel free, come, come along to meet the team, talk all things ed tech. I'll be there to, um, to talk about that and iPad and, um, and everything else that I like around uh, the use of technology. So... Um, looks like Sue, you're going to get an extra 10 minutes back in your day because there's not been any other questions. But thank you very much um, for, for giving up your time to, to come and help and support us with, uh, with Learn and Redefined. Well, good luck to everybody. I hope everyone stays well. I hope we get back to being able to actually do those hands on things we all want to do. And um, just remember the iPad and off offline and online can easily be merged. And it's important that we kind of do the both because um, it makes the kids really think in, in 2D, 3D is a very different world. So good luck to everyone. And I hope you enjoy whatever coding programs you decide to do. Um, it, it's very worthwhile and your kids will get a lot from it. So enjoy. Thank you for coming to this afternoon. Thanks a lot. And Take care. I know everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.